All right, so in this video, we're going to cover the inverse of trig functions, the inverses. And in this one, we'll probably just get through sine and cosine. So let's talk about what an inverse, what it means for a function to have an inverse, at least in terms of the graph. So here I have the graph of the sine function, uh, two periods of it. Now we know it's going to keep going on forever in both directions. If I uh, graph the uh, or plot the key points in this table, I would get uh, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Okay, um, now let's graph the inverse. So I have, a, I have it all set up. We're going to graph the inverse. And the notation, by the way, is sine uh, with that negative 1 there. Okay, that doesn't mean reciprocal. It means inverse. So sine inverse we're going to sketch right here. So it's easy to do because you just flip your x and y values to get a graph. And so, so let's do that. I'm just going to literally copy down the y values from this column into the x values in this column. Great. So now let's plot these points. Notice what happens. All right, so I'm going to graph this. I'm going to connect these points. And there we are. So there would be at least the inverse of the this section that we see. So this is this here is y equals sine inverse. Now there's a problem with this graph. The problem with this graph is it's not a function. So it's not a function because for one reason, or one quick test, is that it fails the vertical line test, right? And it fails it miserably here. If we really, if we sketched all of it, right, because this is going to keep going, you can imagine this is going to keep going up and it's going to keep going down. It fails the vertical line test. So it's not a function. And that's a problem. It's a problem in math. We like functions, right? We want there to be one answer. For instance, like when I input 0 into this function, there's a bunch of answers, 0, pi, 2 pi, and that's a problem. Okay, we want it to be a function. So in order to fix that, in math what we do is we call it, we uh, do what's called restricting the domain. So, so what do I mean by that? Well, here is our sine graph again, and clearly I can't I can't just take the inverse of this whole picture because if I do that, it'll fail the vertical line test. Now the reason it, I'm sorry, it's inverse will fail the vertical line test. Now the reason it's inverse is going to fail the vertical line test is because the sine graph fails the horizontal line test, right? So if we want our inverse of the sine graph, uh, the inverse sine function to pass the vertical line test, we need this We need this to pass the uh, horizontal line test. So there's not there's no other way to do it than to simply cut off cut off a section of the graph so that it is forced to fail, uh, forced to pass the horizontal line test. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to erase. I'm going to erase this whole. I wish I had a darker black, but we'll just. I'm going to erase all this. All the way up to here. This will be better. Here we go. Gone. And all of that. Now, oops, just get, now if you see what's left, 
we have one little section of the sine graph, but it will it will pass the horizontal line test, right? It'll pass the horizontal line test, which is what we wanted. And so watch what happens when I sketch the inverse just on this section. And so by the oh, by the way, what we just did here by crossing off all this was called restricting the domain. So we restricted the domain to be the new domain of this is domain uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so we just looked at a section of the sine graph so that we can, so that its inverse is going to be a function, so that it passes the horizontal line test and its inverse will be a function. Now watch what happens if I sketch the inverse. So I can do this by just, I can do this just by, I, I, this is annoying me, this little section here, sorry. There. Um, we can do this if we just look either to the previous page. Right? All we want is the section between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 in the y direction and negative 1 and 1 in the x direction. So what that means is the graph is going to look like this. There. So there is sine inverse. And this is the one we use because now it's a function, right? It passes the vertical line test. So in restricting the domain up here of the original sine graph, our, uh, we, make, we force its inverse to be a function. So now there's no confusion. When I say sine inverse of 0, the answer is 0. Sine inverse of 1, let's write a couple of those down. Sine inverse of 0, just look at the graph, it's 0. Sine inverse of 1 is equal to pi over 2. Okay, so this is again, this is the graph of sine inverse, the one that we're going to use, the one that's a function. Now, what does that mean over here in our unit circle? And this is going to be important later. Here's our unit circle. We're restricting the domain of sine to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So where is negative pi over 2 over here? Well, it's down here, right? And pi over 2 is up here. So what we've done in this, in this diagram, when we restrict the domain, is we have we have eliminated these quadrants from consideration. Right? Because negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 means I rotated down to negative pi over 2 or up to pi over 2. So when we do it, you'll see later when this comes into play, but when we do inverse trig problems, this diagram is going to be important. We're not going to be using these quadrants anymore to get answers. Okay? So there is the, uh, there is inverse sine. We'll do inverse cosine in the next video. First, I got to... Inverse, uh, inverse cosine in the next video. <clears throat>